wireless doorbell hacking, and other software-defined radio tips, this time on Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by Domain.com. Hello and welcome to Hack 5. My name is Darren Kitchen. My name is Shannon Moore. It's your weekly dose of Technolust. I am so excited about Me this week. Me too. In this <laughs> awesome episode of Hack 5, we are going to be taking a look at some of the awesome feedback that we've gotten over the last couple of episodes on hacking sub 1 gigahertz gadgets using, of course, the RTL SDR and the Yardstick 1. Of course. Mm -hmm. I'm excited, so we should just dive right in. I think so. So we got a question from Peyton. Can the Yardstick 1 be used with GQRX or do you need an RTL SDR for it? So surprise, the Yardstick 1 is not a software-defined radio in the traditional sense. It's a transceiver that operates on common frequencies with the ability to transmit and receive common modulation techniques. So more specifically, it's flashed with the RF CAT firmware, which allows control through the interactive Python shell or allows you to write your own programs using the RF CAT libraries. Which is what the TorChat was using, basically. Exactly, yeah. So if you happen to know that uh, the frequency and the modulation, you can use the Yardstick 1 to receive that data, but not necessarily through GQRX. You still have to use Python. Right. And for those not familiar with GQRX, which is an awesome bit of software, it is a general software-defined radio receiver that is powered by the open source GNU radio framework, and it allows you to tune various radios, including HackRF, the USRP, and of course, our very favorite, the rtl I actually have one going right here, and you can see I am tuned to 94.093. And um, ah. just picking up a little, uh, let's see, receiver options, a little WFM. Let me turn some my volume up. Yeah, local radio station. Local radio, cool. FM. I was doing some some lower frequency stuff earlier today, picking up some trains. <laughs> yeah, that was That's, kind of awesome. Uh, fun Ooh, stuff. Trains. <laughs> oh, yes. Awesome good so stuff. <laughs> the RTL SDR, like the one that he's using, you mentioned, is pretty much our favorite RX device. I mean, it's cheap, it works, so it's pretty sweet. And that works with GQRX in the same way that the Yardstick 1 is our new favorite TX device, our transmitting device. And they're both very low cost. They both do a few things very, very well. It's a great kind of way to get like your toe dipped into some of this stuff because yeah. uh, especially with the Internet of Things and all of these so many vulnerable devices, yeah. um, it's it's kind of a, your best bet. Uh, and then I would say the next step is probably a Hack RF or a Blade RF or a USRP or something like yeah, that. But those are a lot more expensive. So just to like get your feet wet, I always say start with the $20 RTL SDR. And then if you want to start transmitting, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> we also got a fantastic uh, question from Transfeminist Autism who wrote that the FCC's database is a very handy thing. However, I would like to know or to see how to figure out uh, the frequency and the modulation type without using the FCC database. Basically, hacking device you don't own and don't have physical access to. Hmm. So if you don't know the device that you're targeting, it's going to be a lot more difficult to audit. So let's take a look at a very basic example. So say you want to do some security research on the viability of doing a replay attack against this wireless doorbell. Just like if you were to attack a network or launch a spear phishing at campaign, the first order of business is to learn everything that you can about the target. Now, since the receiver the, with the FCC ID is inside this locked warehouse, the only thing that we have to go on is that the manufacturer, turns out, is Honeywell. So a good start would be to search for models of Honeywell wireless doorbells and see if we can't figure out their operating frequencies. That said, if the tools at our disposal just so happen to be a yardstick one and an RTL SDR, it's a pretty safe bet that unless the doorbell is actually operating at a yardstick one compatible frequency, namely 315, 433, and the 900 megahertz ranges, then we're not going to be able to transmit on it anyway. Yeah. So in this case, it's just a matter of tuning to those common frequencies and trying our luck. So with GQRX here, I'm going to tune our RTL SDR to those common frequencies and ring the doorbell. Try it at 315, nothing. Try it at 433, nothing. Try it at 915, hey, there we go. At this point, really, it's just a matter of redoing the same steps that we did two weeks ago yeah. uh, with hacking those key fobs. That's totally cool. <laughs> I love it. So now we are going to take a break and thank our sponsor. But when we get back, we're converting radio waves to packets across the internet using cats, just like Kirby. Using cats? Domain.com and .club came to Hack5 with a great idea. 
build a club all about learning stuff, making things, and having fun. So we've been hosting open houses at the Hack5 warehouse through hackhouse.club. And with the help of domain.com and .club, we've taken it to the next level with the Quadcopter Arena of Doom. From LAN parties, drone racing, and battle arenas, to 3D printing, software-defined radios, and let's not forget barbecue, hacking is just plain better when it's social. Doc Club gets it, and they are the perfect social domain. Whether it's IRC or clubs in RL, it's all about coming together and having fun. So what better domain to do it than a Doc Club? It's perfect because a Doc Club is universally and globally understood. So if you're looking for the ultimate social domain, consider a Doc Club. So join us this summer in the San Francisco Bay Area and bring your mini quadcopter to the arena for DroneBattle.Club. We're setting up the leaderboard, so show us what you've got. And what's your dot club? Let us know and we'll share it with the Hack5 audience and help spread the word. Get yours over at domain.com slash club. They're only $9.99 a year and there are thousands of great domains available. And be sure to use the coupon code HAK5 to get 15% off and let them know we sent you. So when you think domain names, think domain.com. We are back, and before we go, I wanted to point out an awesome feature that you might overlook in GQRX, and that is the ability to actually stream audio over UDP packets. I would actually tell you a joke about it, but I'm afraid that you wouldn't get it. <laughs> <You're right. laughs> so essentially, it's just a matter of clicking the network config button under the audio tab, entering a host and port, and then you'll be able to pick up the audio stream as a single channel 16-bit stream at 48 kilohertz sample rate. There we go. So get this. If I go ahead and enter in Shannon's IP address here, uh, it's under audio, the audio tab here, and then I hit, um, hit network options, and I can go ahead and enter in her IP address and the UDP port number, and it's really just escape to get out of this menu. There we go. Cool. And Hurrah. you got my you got my IP address yes. correct? Yes. Okay, cool. It is, uh, <laughs> I believe, so it's uh, dot one three four. So Yes. Okay, cool. Sweet. So then I can pick up the packets using one of my favorite command line tools, Netcat, which you all know from my hack tips. So Netcat in Ubuntu, for example, is NC. So I type in NC, TAC L, and L is for listen, TAC U for UDP and the port number, and you're using 1234, correct? Yes. OK, so when I press Enter, I just get a bunch of garbled gook. Ooh, that's kind of sad. So as you can see, my terminal gets pretty much filled up with a whole bunch of packets, yo. I mean, it's <laughs> not that useful. But as you know, in Linux, it's all about piping or passing that standard out from one thing, like Netcat, to something else, like, for example, Aplay. So I'm going to use this tool called Aplay to actually play the audio. So once again, I'll type in the same thing, nc tac l tac u 1234 and then I'm going to pipe it, so that long pipe letter <laughs> thing, <laughs> Aplay, tac r for rate, and it's going to be 48k, tac f, S16 underscore LE, TAC T for type, raw, TAC C for channel, and channel is going to be one. And what did that F stand for? That is I the remember. type, I want to say. No, the type is raw. F is F, uh, uh, format. Format, yes. It is okay. format, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> Thank you for that. So, OK, go ahead. So and I press Enter. And hopefully you can hear that through my microphone, but I'm basically getting the radio signals piped through UDP. So there we have it. I'm pretty much listening to Darren's SDR through GQRX and Netcat. Dude, I love Netcat. This is the beauty of Linux. And get this, this technique can be useful for all sorts of things, not just, you know, uh, it basically, like, imagine having wireless remote nodes, right? We could even have, for instance, uh, you know, a Raspberry Pi or something running and being able to send this over a wireless network or the internet so we could analyze and decode remote signals from things like, well, you know, ADSB, which we've talked about, EOTDs, which we'll talk about soon, AIS, APRS. I mean, it's really limitless. Anyway, there is so much more cool stuff that you can do with GQRX, which I always want to call GCHQ for some reason, <laughs> but that is totally something different. Um, so anyway, check it all out. You can even control this over the network. Uh, it's really cool. Check it out, gqrx.dk.
All right, so if you guys have any tips to share with us, let us know in the comments below, or you can always email us. And stay tuned to next week as we're gonna get into hacking keyless entry systems with the RTL SDR, and we're gonna bring it back with the Yardstick one. Yes. Also, if you guys are looking for either of those really awesome devices and you wanna support Hack5 directly, head on over to hakshop.com because your support actually keeps us going. Yes. And we thank you so very much for doing that. Thank you. And hey, while you're at it, check out the show notes for this and all of the previous episodes as well as all of our other shows and all of our other episodes and the ways to follow us and all that good stuff over at hak5.org. Yay! Yes, with that, I am Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. Trust your technolust. Bye. She does this. I don't know what to do with it. I just, just smile and nod.